the SU Canada. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Toy Story 4, and I'm actually kind of happy that I get to use this Toy Story mug I got a long time ago. Actually, I can't exactly remember where I got it from. Anyways, Toy Story 4 is probably the best, most unnecessary sequel of all time. Literally. They didn't need to make a sequel for this movie. They didn't need to make a sequel at all, and a lot of people were feeling that when the first trailer came out. A lot of negative reaction towards it. A lot of people were afraid that the Toy Story series was going to turn into the car series. At least to say it didn't. This movie surprised me in a lot of ways. It was very funny, it was very heartfelt, and it actually is probably one of the best movies about Woody in particular. I've enjoyed all the Toy Story movies, but when you think about how long the span of time has been between all four films, it's been 24 years since the first movie came out. So you've got to wonder how or really why they thought to do a sequel to this film. And it has nothing really to do with the kids anymore. And obviously that must have been a big idea when they were making this movie because it's not really like the others. It doesn't focus more so on the kids, what happens with the kids passing into a new time. It does a little bit with Connie, but not anywhere in the same degree. This is a Toy Story movie. This is about the toys and their tribulations, their struggles, their challenges, their lives, particularly Woody. And this is because this film is following Woody trying to train this brand newly made toy Forky how and why his purpose is in the world. And while he's doing this, he's kind of trying to cover up his own feelings, his own disagreements with his own situation, his purpose. And this film really talks about the freedom of the toys and what would happen if toys actually were able to be a sentient beings when we weren't looking. I in enjoyed this movie a lot more than I expected. I really enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed that there really isn't an antagonist in the film. You could say there is, but really there isn't. Probably the most vile or evil thing you could say is the weird goosebump looking puppeteer puppet things that are walking around the place. Otherwise, we actually have a heartfelt compassion and connection with the antagonist of this movie to the point where she actually has one of the most emotional scenes in the movie i actually shed a tear during this scene i couldn't believe it because it comes kind of out of nowhere and it hits you like an emotional train but in a good way and then we also have what happens with woody and his connection with bo peep and kind of them rekindling themselves refinding themselves and just their story in this film this is really woody's movie the other toys are barely in this i think slinky Mr. Potato Head and all of them have maybe one or two lines. And they talked a lot about how the fact that Don Rickles died even before they started filming this movie. And they used a bunch of old lines and audio technology to bring him back. He says like three lines. It wasn't that big of a woo in the end. Even Buzz is in this movie, but he actually doesn't do much. He's actually quite funny in this movie. I was hoping for more of Buzz. But then this kind of comes into the play of how these films have been structured, organized. The first movie was really about Buzz and Woody dealing with that and then the second film was about Woody with Buzz dealing with that and then the third film was about all of them but this is going back to the idea of Woody being the main character I have no idea what they're going to do if they do another one because at the rate that they're going the next one might come out in what 2027 they ended really well they end it well they don't need to do another one but I have a feeling they might but I don't know if they're gonna luck out because so far they have four home runs. Rarely do you get that in a series. There is no other series that has gone this long that you can say that they have all been dynamite. Otherwise, I enjoyed this film. I thought it was much better than I expected. The music was very good, except for this one song where Randy Newman's basically mumbling. It's like the second song in the movie. I, I have honestly no idea what he said. And I would highly recommend this for both adults and for kids. Also, the Keanu Reeves character is it's so damn good. There's a part where he's gonna jump off a uh, bookshelf and he has this little moment with himself and I started laughing so goddamn hard. In the end, I'm gonna give Toy Story 4 a 6 out of 7. This was an incredibly surprising and well-made movie and I am beyond impressed that this movie didn't suck. Anyways guys, hope you liked this review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. <sniffs> hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.